Hi guys, welcome to ET Land, and today we are going to look at Daiji Show. And I always find it very weird to say like Daiji Show because like it is totally not the way how we should pronounce it. The correct pronunciation is Daiji Show. Daiji Show is is going down anyway. Um, so I have a Retro Pocket 4 Pro here. I'm going to say Retro Pocket 2, but yeah, this is the Retro Pocket 4 Pro. And I'm going to talk about the advanced settings for Daiji Show because there are something very confusing that may not be easy for people to understand and you have to set it up for the first time, for example. And actually this widget page is very helpful, but also not too easy to set up. So here I have my Odin 2. Uh, just a second. So I have this IG show uh, kind of fully set up. So uh, you can see that I have Xbox Cloud Gaming here. I also have some Switch games and some pictures and also my Steam link. So if you just add your Android apps here, it is going to look super ugly. So let me uh, have a little try here. So if you are adding app short shortcuts here, for example, pick an item, then pick a an app, for example, you can still add game pass here, but it looks like this and is ugly. It doesn't fit the, th the theme that you would have on your widget page, which I just want to make anything here to be pink. And it is impossible to change the picture here, you can see. But here, see you can choose the alternative picture. So how did I do this? So the first and very important thing that I'm going to talk about in this tutorial is how to add Android as a platform. What do I mean? Like if you look at the platform you have, you have all this system here and you can actually have Android. We. Yeah, you can add the Android app onto it. So how do we do this? This is actually quite easy. So first of all, go to Chrome. And then this link is going to be in my description box. This is a very helpful link from the Discord of Daijizou. And someone posted it on Reddit earlier. And we are going to download it. So you can download it from here and open then we actually have this uh, JSON file and then what we have to do is that first we go to our files app this is the mix app click continue and then click turn on I'm sorry about my cat he's calling me but yeah just ignore him he just want the attention Okay, so let's go to, I'm sorry, I, this is out of focus. Okay, go to download and then we have this JSON file, but this is not going to work right now. And if it is not working for you, you want to change this extension to JSON. Okay. So now it is Android JSON, dot JSON, dot JSON. Anyways, this is going to work. So now let's get back to Daijiso. So we still have this game pass here, not going to work in terms of aesthetic speaking. So what we have to do is go to library and then we can manually import the platform here. So now we actually change the extension to JSON, so it's going to appear. If it is not, you just go back to download where you get this file and then it will also appear here. Press it. So now we want to update our library. So since we have nothing on here, the only thing that is going to appear is the Android platform. So you click sync entirely and then it is syncing. And now we have Android here. 
Well, that. So、um, we can go to library, and then we have this kind of games. I won't refuse here. So here we have four different games, and some games may not appear here. For example, Xbox is not here. So how do we add the Xbox Game Pass to here? Simple. Go to Apps, and then we can long press Game Pass. Flag Game Pass as a game. Now, if we just go back here, we will find nothing. But when we go back to settings and then sync entirely again, then we can see the Game Pass here. So how do we get the Game Pass on the widget page that does not look like that? Easy.、Um, add new widget. Pin and play, just like how you add any other game. Now pick an item. Since we only have Android here, we will have all these apps here. But if you have like thousands of games, it will not appear here, and you have to type in Game Pass. But anyways, that's the idea. So now click Game Pass, and then it is a lot bigger, and it it looks a lot better. So if you want to change it to any other pictures, for example, Power World, for example. You just have to click any pictures on your phone,、uh, on your Retro Pocket Four, and then you see it here. Easy, isn't it? So that's the first thing I want to talk about on the、uh, Digital Advanced Tutorial. And the second thing is that sometimes、uh, the R1 and L1 buttons are not going to work when you want to navigate. So how do we change that? It is actually quite important because sometimes, sometimes you are going to disable it. Here you have the tabs hotkey, and you want to click this and match it with your L1 and your R1. Now it will work. So that's my second tip. Okay, so when you want to play a game directly without getting into the info page, just like this, you know, voila. So what you want to do is that, okay, let's press home and go back. What you need to do is just to change it to kiosk mode here. Turn it on. And you will never have to get into that info page again. So that's my third. Okay, now let's move on to our fourth tips. I don't know if you have ever experienced this. Sometimes when we are playing games with the retro art, for example, it is going to give you a warning message like this. Like every time when you launch a game. So this is annoying, and there is a simple way that we can solve this. Go to settings. Okay, then we go to library. Now here, display disable players warnings. So after we have set this, we can go back to platform. Now everything is gone. You are not going to have that warning any time anyway. So、uh, that's my fourth tips. Okay, so sometimes we want to play a game, for example, and we have already installed several emulator, but we are not sure we, what we have installed. So let's go to I'm sorry. So let's go to this pan button on the right right hand corner, and then we can go to the player settings, and here is a drop down menu that we can change what kind of emulator that we are going to use. For example, I thought I have installed the 3DS Citra Nightly. And I'm gonna save it. Okay, so let's get into my library and randomly pick a game. Now it says it's not installed, and what you're gonna do is click detect, and it will tell you what is being installed. Now I want to press this here, and then it will play it for me. Easy, isn't it? So yes, and that is my fifth tips. Okay, let's move on to my sixth tip. Sometimes when you have 
games in other languages, for example, for me, I have tons of Japanese games here. And if those boxes are not scraped correctly, sometimes there is a an easier way that you can try, which is when we go to the settings, go to library, and we can actually try this aggressive scraping and it will help you to find the relative box art. Not every time I create and not every game can be found, but at least I found it a lot easier and actually it is quite accurate in my opinion, so I would definitely turn this thing on here. Okay, moving on to my seven tips, I want to talk a little bit about the wallpapers and theme. First of all, you can download a lot of themes here. And personally, I recommend Pop and Pop Mini a lot because obviously I am using it here. Because it basically covered like every every platform that I have and it is very cute. You know, you don't really get that much of themes that also cover the Wonder Swan color and stuff. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that. And if, for example, it doesn't load up the Android platform for you, you can also find it on Reddit. You can download the picture and then select the wallpaper, then click on. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I've already set it up, but that's the idea. So that's about the theme and that's my seventh tip and that's my seventh tips and then if you can see in the background there is another cute picture here this is actually a wallpaper that I have set and you'll see it on every single page other than you know the platform and the things inside the platform you will not see it here but on the widget apps and settings you'll see it here so you can just simply press set wallpaper and then select one and then there you go so that's my eight tips and um going moving on to our ninth item i want to talk about our ui skill so here is the scale I'm using. I'm using 1.05, which is a relatively low but particular number. The reason why I'm using it is because on our Odin 2, for example, the biggest number of icons that we can have on one single line, one single row is six icons. So if you go over 1.05, for example, 1.75, you'll find it bigger, but less icons. So it is really up to you. Depends on how many icons that you want to have on one single page and how big it is. Um, if you want to fill it up, maybe 1.075 is better. But if you want the most out of the most, then you want to go for the 1.05. So that's really up to you. If you have many games here, you may want to go this way. Okay, last but not least, this is the 10 tips we have in this video. And this is actually about the preview video. I don't know if you ever found it very annoying. For example, when I go to Steam links here, by the way, on the widget page, you can't just go through and do the press and play thing. You have to go to this information page. And you can see that there is a video playing behind and just a random guy is speaking so every time when I have to go through this page I find it very annoying if you want to turn that off there is actually one way you can do so go to settings go to video and sound and then you can turn off the preview video and turn off the video sound if you want the video here but without the sound, you can just keep the preview video on and turn off the video sound. And that's pretty much the idea how you can turn off those random videos on the background. Um, just a bonus tips, if you want to remove the button sounds, you can just press it and 
turn it off here but I just like how it sounds so I'm going to keep it and yes that's pretty much about my first tutorial on a font digital settings I hope it helps you for these kind of tips because I have seen many like starter guides for digital but they don't mention this kind of things and i think this is kind of important uh so um i think i've seen enough starter guides and i don't think i have to make one but if you want me to make a starter guide for digital and stuff just comment and i'll see if there is enough demand for that and i will see if i need to make one but that's pretty much about this video i'm sure i'm sorry that i am making it in a hurry and the sound quality is may not be the best and i've been like uttering and stuff so um i'm really sorry about that and i hope you still enjoy this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye!